Meet Art, the amphibious robot turtle. As its name suggests, Art is a robot that can swim in water and walk on land. And it's all down to a clever party trick. It has legs that can turn into flippers. According to the team of researchers behind the bot, this shape-shifting ability has the potential to make Art more efficient than existing amphibious machines. So some robot designers will say, okay, we know propellers work you know, well in water to move around, and we know wheels work well on land. So let's make a robot put propellers on it, and we put wheels on it. In water, a propeller um, might be very efficient, but on land, um, it doesn't really allow the robot to move. But it ends up being additional weight on the robot, um, additional space. This is where art makes its efficiency gains. Instead of having separate components to move in water and on land, Art's morphing limbs can adapt to suit both, removing the need for redundant parts. So these are the two modes of the morphing limb. So on my right here, we have uh, the flipper mode, which is this flat hydrodynamic shape. And then on my left here, we have the leg mode, which is this uh, shape cylindrical and load-bearing and we have a little curvature on the end of the limb that gives it some surface area so that it can contact the ground um, and not, not just fall over. Creating this limb required some principles from the rapidly growing field of soft robotics. On the outside, there's a balloon that inflates and gives the limb its shape. And on the inside, bonded to this balloon, is a material that changes its stiffness. When it's heated up past a certain temperature, it becomes very soft and pliable. And so using these materials, we can transition from the flipper to the leg, or from the leg to the flipper, that can walk on land or swim in water, or transition between the two. But creating adaptable limbs was just the first step. Next, they needed to program art with patterns of movement, known as gates, to make use of these morphing materials. And for inspiration, as you might have guessed, they turned to turtles and their terrestrial counterparts, tortoises. So the walking gate is called a, a creeping gate. This isn't the fastest gate, but it's similar to a tortoise. So if you look at a tortoise, they have sort of this amble where they're lifting their legs up slowly, uh, one by one. Um, and this is what this creeping gate was inspired by. So we also have a gate that's inspired more by, for example, sea turtles. And this is the quintessential uh, flapping motion you would see a sea turtle doing sort of a quasi figure eight pattern in which the flipper is coming up and then coming down and it's changing its, its angle with respect to the, the forward direction all the while. These two gates seem to do the job well on land and in water, but Art ran into some difficulty on the awkward terrain between the two environments, which is often sandy, stony or muddy, and Art often slipped or got stuck. So the team opted for another, less elegant solution. So we looked at beaching sea turtles and basically the locomotion strategy they use, which is lying on their uh, stomachs and then pulling themselves forward. And it's not particularly graceful, um, but shifting the gate really gave us a little more versatility in where the robot could go. The researchers calculated metrics for art's efficiency by measuring how much power it used and how fast it was able to move for its weight in different settings. And armed with its morphing limbs and shifting gates, art was able to match or outperform many exclusively terrestrial or exclusively aquatic robots, while still being able to move in both environments. Of course, art is still a work in progress. Right now, for example, it's tethered, meaning its power supply and programming center aren't housed within the body itself. But in the future, the team hopes that morphing amphibious bots loaded with sensors or cameras, like you can see here, could be used for things like ecological monitoring or even disaster response. And their shape-shifting approach to robot design doesn't have to stop there. So I don't think it's necessarily confined to just a robot with morphing limbs. This idea can be extended where we have uh, robot bodies that morph more drastically to specialize for different types of locomotion, different tasks. I think if people see the potential efficiency gains, shape morphing uh, lends itself to adaptability in a variety of robotic applications.